Hey there, ACCA students. I'm Steve Willis. In this video, I'm going to help you get a pass on your upcoming performance management exam. We're going to dive into the difficult topic, shadow price. We're going to do that in the context of the past exam question, cut and stitch, and I'm going to hook you up with all the exam technique that you need. If you'd like to watch this video with no ads, if you'd like to get all of my premium content, if you'd like to join my WhatsApp channel so you can ask any question you want, click on the link here in the upper right. Okay, team, let's get started. I have the past exam question, cut and stitch, open on my screen. You can find the link to this PDF in the description of the video below. Click on it, download this question. I recommend that you give it a try before you continue watching the video. In a previous video, I took you through part A. Find, by appropriate calculation, the optimal production mix and the maximum contribution that could be earned by cut and stitch. I recommend you go back at this point. If you are fuzzy on linear programming, you can spend an extra 20 minutes and review part A in my previous video. When you're done with that, you can come right back here. However, if you are up to speed on linear programming and solving limiting factors questions with multiple constraints, then just keep watching right now. Before we go further with this exam question, let's review the, cost, the concept of shadow price. Let's boil it down to its basics. Let's imagine I have a bakery. The only thing I produce are donuts. Steve's Donut Shop. One of the ingredients that I need is flour. And the minimum quantity that I can buy flour from, from my supplier, is one kilo. And with one kilo, I can make 10 donuts. Okay, there's our little scenario. Now, let us imagine that flour is now a very scarce resource. I cannot purchase enough flour to satisfy the demand for my donuts. So I am turning away hungry customers. Now, out of the blue, I find a new special supplier. And this supplier tells me, it's called the supplier, Mr. X, I will sell you more flour but I will charge you an extra 30 cents, put it in dollars, per kilo for the flour that I supply you. And guys, we're always talking about in excess of the price that I am currently buying at. So it's going to cost me 30 cents more per kilo to buy more flour. I have a burning question. Should I buy more flour at this higher price and make more donuts? Here's the answer. Only if the incremental contribution that we earn from selling 10 donuts exceeds the additional 30 cents that we had to pay extra to buy that flour. So we need to understand the incremental contribution from selling 10 more donuts and we will compare that to the incremental price and i already told you to buy the extra kilo of flour we're going to spend 30 cents. Let me now give you more inf information. 
the contribution that we earn from a donut is five cents, 0 0.05 per unit. If I buy another kilo of flour, it's gonna cost me 30 cents, we'll make that negative. With that flour, I will produce another 10 donuts and I will earn an additional 50 cents. Five cents times 10 is 50. Look at the difference. The difference is a positive 20 cents increase in contribution. So I will accept the vendor's offer of paying 30 cents more than my normal price. Guys, this is a short-term decision, and we have just met the concept of shadow price. Shadow price is the incremental contribution that we will earn from acquiring one more unit of scarce resource. So if I can get my hands on one more kilo, I'll make 10 donuts, five cents per unit, I'll earn an extra 50 cents. That is the shadow price. There it is. It is that straightforward. And that tells me how much extra would I be willing to pay for that scarce resource. So I would be willing to pay up to 50 cents extra. Then I'd break even. So maybe I'd prefer 49 cents. So at least I make something. I'm back in the past exam question. I'm looking at the requirement for part B. Calculate the shadow prices of fabric per meter and tailor time per hour. So the shadow price, we're going to do tailor time. If the tailors give us one more hour of work, how much additional contribution will we earn with that one hour? That's shadow price. Let's jump into it. Let's recap what all of these numbers are all about. Then we'll make quick work of it. If we read the first paragraph, we discover Cut and Stitch, the company, they make two products. And they use labor, tailors, and fabric the two inputs. Both of these are in short supply, so the company cannot meet their maximum demand right now. They are limited by their access to these inputs. And the accountant has started solving the problem correctly. Very important. I could envision some future exam question where it was a junior accountant who did it, and you have to then fix all the problems. That would be one possibility, but that is not our situation. So this person went through the steps correctly of solving a linear programming problem. First thing that we did was define the variables. And this is going to be in units, not money. It's going to be about the number of products. So W number of work suits, L, number of lounge suits. Next step, done correctly. These are the constraints and they will be expressed with a less than or equal sign. So we have the total number of hours that the tailors give us and the total square meters of fabric that we can acquire from our supplier. Less than or equal. So we cannot go above that. Now, this number, this coefficient here in front of the W, in front of the L, that is the number of hours, the quantity of that resource. So, so a work suit takes seven hours of tailor time. A lounge suit takes five hours. A work suit takes two square meters. A lounge suit takes two square meters. 
whatever combination of work suits and lounge suits we produce, we cannot use more than the maximum that we have. And look at this, we have another constraint. Work suits cannot go above 400. So we did find that there is a maximum demand for work suits. We don't want to produce more than 400. We won't be able to sell them. So those are the constraints. And now the next part of this is we understand the objective function, maximizing profit. If we want to maximize profit, we always go after contribution in the short-term situations, assuming the fixed costs are fixed. So when we're done solving our problem here, we will plug in the number of work suits, the number of labor suits, that's the contribution per unit, and we will get the total contribution. Now, if we look at the graph that the accountant correctly prepared, we've got an x-axis and a y-axis. Remember, that's not money, that's about number of units, number. Number of work suits, number of lounge suits. And the management accountant has correctly graphed the constraints. So we have a constraint for the fabric. That means we can't produce beyond that green line. We don't have enough fabric to do more than 600 of the lounge suits and 600 of the work suits. Then when we plot the constraint of the material, it looks like this. And we also then have the final constraint right over here of that maximum demand. So what we do now is we plot a feasibility region. The production plan has to lay in this zone. We do not have enough material to go beyond it and not enough demand to go beyond that. So guys, that would be the feasibility region. Finally, we plot the contribution equation into our graph, which we put here. That is called the ISO contribution line. That is showing me the different mixes of products giving me the same contribution. We could make all of this. We could make 240 of the lounge suits, zero work suits, or we could make 200 work suits, zero lounge suits. That's going to give me the same contribution, any combination of, of those, of those uh, units. And the more material that we have, the more units we can make. So then what the management accountant, accountant did, they extended that line, keeping it parallel till it hit point B. And they correctly determined that point B maximizes our contribution. And we calculated in the previous video together, the link is right here, you can go back through that, we calculated that the profit maximizing number of work suits is equal to 250. The profit maximizing number of lounge suits is 350. That is the best production plan, the most the, the profit optimizing production plan. And we said that that gives me a maximum contribution of 26 thousand dollars that's where we left off this is where we are going to pick up so let's get ready to rock the shadow price let's do the shadow price of labor together first thing that i'm going to do is restate my equations for my constraints and my
profit maximizing production plan. We said that the equation for labor was seven hours for the work suit plus five hours for the lounge suit is going to be equal to three fives, 3,500 hours. We want to use up all of our hours, so let's make it equal. Then we said, right, that's for the labor. Then we said for materials, it was two and two. That was two W plus two L equal to 1,200 units. And we said our maximum contribution, put it over here, is 26,000. Imagine this. The tailors come to us and they say, we will work for another 50 cents per hour. We'll, we'll do that for overtime premium of 50 cents per hour. Should we take them up on their offer? Well, we need to find the shadow price of labor. We need to understand if we put one more hour of labor into our system, how much contribution will it give us? So watch what I do. I will copy my constraint formula is down here. I will add one hour to the labor constraint. If the workers give me one more hour, let's find the new contribution, the new total contribution from this set of resources. And we'll solve this using simultaneous equations. I'm going to take the bottom equation and I will multiply that by 2.5. If I change the left side, I've got to change the right side by the same amount. So I will also multiply the 12,000 by 2.5. Let me copy these down one more time. This is step one. This is going to be step two. Now, that's going to be 5W plus 5X, 5L, excuse me, 5 is equal to 3,000. I subtract the M line from the L line. And we will have 2W plus 0L is equal to 501. Now we can solve for W. And that will be 250.5. Divide both sides by Two. Now that I've got my W, I can plug the W, I can plug 250.5 into the W variable right there on L, on the L line, and I could then solve for L. And when I solve for L, I get 349.5. That is my new optimal production plan. Let's go back to the question. Let's grab the contribution equation. And we see right here the contribution equation. 48W plus 40L. So the contribution of W is 48. Contribution of the L is 40. Let's bring that back to our spreadsheet. Maximum contribution, that will be equal to 48 multiplied by W plus 40 
multiplied by L. And we got 26004. So that's the maximum contribution from the existing resources. Now, what happens? Maximum contribution 26004. That is with an additional labor hour. The shadow price of labor will be the difference between those two lines, the delta, that is $4 per hour. That tells us that if the workers give us one additional hour, we put that into our system, that's going to give me four incremental dollars of contribution. So in my hypothetical question before when I said that the workers asked for a 50 cent overtime premium, they pay us 50 cents, we pay them 50 cents for that hour, 0 0.5. The difference would be that one minus the 50 cents, 350. So we would accept the offer. Guys, that is shadow price. Incremental contribution we get from adding one more unit of scarce resource into our available resources. At this point, you can use the approach that I showed you and you can do the same exact thing for the material. Get the shadow price of material. I'll give you the model answer from ACCA. Uh, look in the description, you can download that. And guys, you can try it on your own. Ladies and gentlemen, that's shadow price. I hope you found this video helpful. This is Steve signing out. Good luck on your upcoming PM exam.